If you win Daytona and you're winning the season, it's like I'm putting the seal on the on the championship. Most all the head Japanese guys go there so that they can see the motocross and the road race. So if you want to win a race, Daytona is a, a big one to have in your hat. It's kind of like the Daytona 500 in that when you win it, it goes down in history rather than just another race. Growing up, there was always this mystique about Daytona. It was always a different race. That's the race all your sponsors want to win. That's the race that a lot of the racers want to win if they could win one single race out of the year. When you say you won a Supercross, it's different. If you, say, you can say I won a Supercross, but I won Daytona. Uh, it's a lot different than your normal Supercross. It's not just in a stadium. It's, you know, it's in the infield of the motorsport place of the world. For the 38th year, the legend of Daytona continues. The Daytona Supercross by Honda from the birthplace of speed is next on television's fastest network. Round number 10 comes your way from inside the beautiful Daytona International Speedway. It's a Daytona Supercross by Honda. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside a former Daytona Supercross winner and of course Supercross Series champion Jeff Emick. Well as you can see we've got a very wet and soggy infield here in Daytona. So Jeff as we get set to go racing with the most prestigious Supercross of the year, what can we expect? Well, it, it, it really is the most prestigious event. Uh, getting your name on that wall is really something special. You know, I think that Chad Reed coming back at uh, last week's event and winning kind of put, uh, put it back into motion that Chad Reed is the man to beat. But everyone is going to have to deal with the weather tonight. Extremely wet. I think the bike is going to, you know, have the most problems. Uh, the goggles set up. But, you know, the riders that can really perform well in the mud, which is Kevin Windham, sets second in points. I think that they're looking for a, a big points, uh, you know, push tonight, and they're hoping for something bad to happen to uh, Chad Reed. And all of the other riders are just looking for that win, that, that exclusive Daytona win. But Chad Reed also, he wants to win this race, and he is definitely on a roll. On a night like tonight, anything's a possibility. Let's show you our menu for tonight's coverage from here in Daytona on Speed. We've got a great lineup for you. We've got Supercross heat races. We've got a wonderful feature for you about how Daytona has evolved over the years. We'll show you highlights from the lights qualifying sessions. We've got the lights main event and the Supercross main event. And joining us in the booth for our call of the main events tonight will be five-time Daytona winner and the man who helped design tonight's racetrack, Ricky Carmichael. And with her water wings on, here's our Erin Bates with a progressive pre-race report. Well, guys, when you think Daytona Beach, Florida, you're thinking sunshine, palm trees, and the beach. Well, the beach has been brought into the infield of the Daytona International Speedway in order to build this track. But unfortunately, Mother Nature has followed us once again, and she has struck down upon us. Take a look. The riders only got one practice this afternoon before torrential downpours started to come down. It came down so bad, in fact, that they had to cancel second practice. These guys only had an abbreviated time to dial in this track, and it's going to be a difficult one. The mechanics are vigorously trying to prepare those bikes and get them ready for these conditions but no matter how you slice it tonight is going to be a messy one and only the strongest are going to survive guys oh without question Aaron it's an no absolute doubt. mess out there tonight but it's going to be fun to watch from this nice dry spot that you and I are in Jeff you see the riders getting ready for Supercross seat number one let's take a look at the Kawasaki track map well, the interesting thing about the uh, track here is that, uh, you know, it's got a great start. There's a, a, a great design that Mark Barnett and Ricky Carmichael put together. But unfortunately, in between all of these jumps is huge water holes. And in the, in the sandy sections, the inside ruts out of turns are going to be bottomless. So it's going to be really important for the riders to keep an eye on the track and remember bad spots so that they don't hit it next lap. And those are going to change continuously throughout the night as the 32nd board is up. Here is our starting grid scrolling across the top of your screen. This will be a six lap heat race for the Supercross class from Daytona. Floundering through the mud and the muck that makes up 
the initial sections on this racetrack as you take a look at the 63 bike of Dusty Clack. Now, Charles Summy and Chad Reed, no, it wasn't Chad, it was Charles Summy for sure, who got stuck when the gate dropped, looking at a trip to the last chance qualifier already. And Dusty Clatt out of Canada, you know he's raced plenty of motocross, national motocross races north of the border that have been extremely wet and muddy. And he's, he's off to a great start here. And I'm telling you, the whole shot is going to be so important. You can see his front number plate is still clean. If he leads this race, there's a pretty good chance that when he crosses the finish line, I mean, if he wins it, when he crosses the finish line, the front of his bike and everything will be clean. The rest of the riders, brown already. We, we don't even have a quarter of a lap in. Figuring out who's who and where's who is going to be a challenge tonight. That's Davey Millsaps on the outside. And that's and Ball looking at second. It. That's Tyler Bright on the 709. Whoa, and that was a bit of a rough ride he took. Almost got bounced off the bike as he took that position for Barney. Now the inside right here. Oh, Clatt's stuck. Dusty Clatt is stuck to the right there. He was our leader. And another rider just went that's down. Millsaps. That's Davey Millsaps. And Balby got through. And take a look. This is the line right here that Clatt was in. And he's still not going anywhere, Jeff. He has sunk that thing all the way up to the rear fender. He won't go anywhere until somebody helps him get the bike out. They're going to need a crane to get that thing out of there. And that's what I was talking about, how the lines will change. And riders have to remember, the riders that passed Clatt, they say, OK, that line on that right hand or next lap around, I don't take that line. So Tyler Bright out of Lexington, North Carolina, leans it right now on his Honda, bike number 709. Take a look at the replay. This is Clatt with the whole shot, with the lead on such an important night. Bike gets stuck in that rut, and I'm telling you, it's bottomless. That rut will not recover. It, it, it's, it's done for the night. Right out front now. And remember, Jeff, in San Francisco earlier this year was probably the muddiest race. We've all had a change for the lead in mid-flight. That's an aggressive move in mid-flight. That's Balby flying past to take the lead. And Balby has worked his way up to the front here. He started about fourth and just seems to be unfazed. And we talk about it a lot, Ralph that my feelings are mud races like this is it's all about the attitude and, and wanting to go out and have fun and taking the pressure off of yourself for the finish or the points. Kevin Windham runs in third. We've already talked about Kevin's prowess in mud races having won back in Anaheim in 2005 and which was another torrential night of rain. Yeah, it was, it, it was terrible. And what, and what has to happen is you see Kevin Wyndham reaching up with his left hand, pulling the roll-offs. There's a clean, a clear strip that rolls across, across and he's going to have, you know, 50 or 60 pulls on that. But, you know, your inner child just has to come out on a night like tonight. And you, and Look at him. He went flying past Bright to take over second place, did Wyndham. Now he's going after Antonio Balbi. Look at how the riders really have to tiptoe through Wyndham, pulling his roll-offs one more time, regrouping after that pass. This section over here, Jeff, is actually not so bad. It's not so bad because that's the clay and that's the high spots. But on the inside of this turn here, where Balbi just went through, there's an inside line there that's as deep, if not deeper, than the one, than the one that Clatt got stuck in. Look at that through there. That's Balby. Now let's go back and show you how Wyndham made that mid-flight pass. Now watch Wyndham right here. On the left of your screen, comes up the left side of the finish line and just absolutely nails it. Hammers the throttle on that Honda 450 and clears it. And of course, in dry conditions, Everybody would have been doing that. Wyndham trying to run down Antonio Balbi. We're coming back to Daytona for more. Is brought to you by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. And by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Welcome back to Daytona. Watch this. Here's Davey Millsaps getting around Eric Sorby, and that was for fourth. Top nine will transfer straight to the main event out of this heat race. This is heat number one for the Supercross class, and Antonio Balbi continues to lead on his number 55 with Kevin Windham 
sitting in third, or second, I should say, with Bright still in third. And Balby putting in such an awesome ride. He really has been unfazed by any other riders or even the track. He's making great line choices. He's not getting stuck in any ruts, but watch how deep it is right here. He has to power through that water hole. Lost his balance there a little bit, but you see him trying to move out to the outside, use, a, use the outside burp. Now right through here is some serious water, and you're conscious of that. You, you know better than to go through those deep uh, water holes, but sometimes you just have to do it. Wyndham right now is really starting to put the pressure on. Jeff, what type of skill is required to be fast in the mud, or is it just natural ability? Well, I definitely think that there's a, a certain balance that you have to have on the bike. And look at Wyndham really closing it up. You just really have to keep your feet on the pegs. You don't want to be sitting on the seat with your feet out. You want to stand up and balance the bike. And it takes a lot of extra work, but you can really carry momentum that way. And on a, on a night like tonight, you want to try to complete as many obstacles. See how Wyndham did a little double-double there off of that? These little things, if you can keep completing the track sections like it's normal, you're going to have faster lap time. Problems now for the 118 at Davy Millsap, a winner on the tour earlier this year. Oh, and he gets taken out by one of those deep sections of water. Yeah, he just plowed in there, and it just took his front wheel and pulled it off to the right. White flag is out for Antonio Balbi. He's one lap away from winning this heat, and laps take a while here tonight. The fastest one by Balbi, a 139.295. And this can be, if, it, if Balbi wins this, this will be the biggest win of his career because uh, he has just put in a fantastic ride. He's gotten better as the races have gone on this year with his Supercross riding. Uh, performs really well in the outboard motocross. And it's showing because he has those type of skills that are really playing a part here tonight. Bobby won the last chance qualifier a week ago up in Indianapolis. And he like third to first to win it. So he's won the LCQ. He's, he's on his way to win the heat. Next, next step's the main event. Well, and if you remember, in San, San Francisco earlier this year, Jacob Marsak finished one spot out of a podium position in San Francisco. So there's no telling who might end up not only on the podium, but at the top step of the podium tonight. Here goes Wyndham. He completes that double. He is close with Balby. Balby's going to feel that and, and hear Wyndham behind him. He needs to not make any mistakes here in these following sections. At the same time, Kevin doesn't want to push too hard and make a mistake and throw away a, a quick transfer to, uh, to the main event. Yeah, for Kevin Wyndham, who set second in the championship points, right now it's about getting in the main event, not necessarily winning this thing, but somebody else. turns left where you can see, that's like the Blackwater 100 going through there. It is, this is more like a GNCC, a Grand National cross country event. Here comes Wyndham, he's actually putting up more pressure, but Bobby's gonna take the win, and then maybe crash. But at that point, it's safe. He's going straight to the main with a heat race win. Kevin Windham will go with him as the top nine riders will transfer straight to the main. We'll be right back to the Daytona International Speedway after this. There's something that makes those as you think might have really didn't, including Mark Barnett, Jeff. Mark Barnett, so strong, so physical of a rider. Ken Howerton, National Motocross Champion. Look at those tracks back then. How about Wardy? Jeff Ward has won everything there is to win in our sport except Daytona. More than once. And The Rock, Michael Rocco, never pulled it off. Definitely one of the toughest riders ever to throw a leg over a bike. A guy that might be hoping to do it tonight, Kevin Windham, has been 0 for 8 here at Daytona. And Kevin Windham still has an opportunity. That's what he has going for him. And we are back inside the World Center of Racing, and you can see the rain is pelting the fans once again who have come out to watch the Daytona Supercross by Honda. And boy, a big tip of the visor to them for weathering the storm, if you will, because it is coming down here in Daytona. These top nine riders that you see are all going on to the main down to McWay. Jeff Gibson is not. Now, remember, Charles Summey got stuck when the gate dropped. He battled his way through to six for the Joe Gibbs Racing Team, and he's taking his Yamaha straight to the main. 
You know, Aaron, a lot of times the fans will beg riders for their jersey. And then this is one night they don't want the jersey of Antonio Baldi. That's for sure, but rain or shine, nothing is going to be taking the smile off Antonio's face. Antonio, this is the first time you've ever won a heat race, but you feel as though you've almost won the main. Oh, for sure, it's a big accomplishment for me. I'm so happy and so glad to be here. First of all, I want to thank God to let me have that opportunity. You know, I'm so happy. These guys, it's grueling out there tonight. Battle of the fittest, survival is going to be the key, right? For sure, it's a tough track, and uh, we have a mud that's kind of similar to what I race in Brazil, you know, and uh, I just got a good start, and I got by K-Dub, but I couldn't believe I'm so happy. But uh, it's just to be here, it's been hard for me. My plane got stuck in Texas, and if it wasn't for Rick Johnson and Mitch Payton, they had a private jet and give my give a ride here, and that's why I'm here. I can't thank those guys enough, and thank God, and for sure my team. Uh, Hooters, Tamer, Motor, Triple X, they've been awesome for me this year. Thanks a lot, guys. Good luck in the main event. Even through all that mud, the smile of a Daytona winner shines bright here at the World Center of Racing. Just motorcycle road races in the United States. The 67th Daytona 200. Last year, Steve Rapp was a surprise winner. Tune in and see if he can defend his crown. The Daytona 200, the season premiere for the AMA Formula Extreme Series. Tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, only on speed. And we are hoping for much drier conditions for the running of the Daytona 200 tomorrow. Supercross heat number two is at the line. Of course, the 22 is Chad Reed. The 29 is Andrew Short. The 28 is Ryan Dungey. And take a look right here under Chad Reed's bike. He's actually standing, and the bike is in water in the starting area. 32nd board is up. Here we go. Heat number two. Nine more riders to the main. Looks like the whole shot's going to come from the outside of the lanes. And it looks like Paul Carpenter of the 42 has taken the early lead. Unfortunately, Skinner was the first rider there, but he went wide in the first turn and gave it all up. But he got there first. So Carpenter out in the lead. Pulling away a little bit. Chad Reed looks like he's sitting in third, making his way around that corner. He did have a really good start, Jeff. He started in the water, like I said, and look, the bike just, it just did not drive out of the gate. And look, he just gets pelted. That's Ryan Dungey next to him, pulling a tear off 30 feet before he even got to the first turn. But look what the veteran does. He sneaks right around the inside, pushes everybody else wide, comes out with a pretty good start. Now he's Sean Skinner on the 56, and then the 29 of Andrew Short there as well. That's Chad Reed on the blue Yamaha. And watch what these riders will do, like Reed. He knows that he wants to complete the sections. You'll see him sit down, hammer the throttle. Well, he got, got a little bit wet there. And then just launch the bike over some doubles. Now, remember, these riders only had one round of qualifying practice. The track was not even the same, the same layout, but it was not the same feel. So what these riders have to do is they go off of instincts, years and years of riding and racing their motorcycle and knowing how to perform in the mud. Battle for the lead, and there goes Reed, plowing his way past Paul Carpenter. So Chad Reed takes the lead here in the early stages of heat number two, and that's exactly where he wants to be on a night like tonight. Now just focus on the obstacles at hand and work your way through the laps. You're trying to keep out of the water, trying to keep out the deep water holes, really paying attention to, to not go into those ruts that will lead you into a big sinkhole. Chad Reed here, you see him working his way through. Look how much water, when we get that close up, how much water is about to actually come up at the rider from his own bike, let alone the other machines. And you can see Chad not only working the bike on the ground, but in mid-flight as well. Yeah, yeah, because these ruts really throw off your balance, and if you take off, you hammer the throttle, the bike starts to go a direction that you don't want to go, you have to counter that in the air and hope that you're going to land in a good line, that you're not going to land off the side on a tough block or, you know, you know in a deep rut that you, uh, that you don't want. Let's see if we can work our way back to second. There is Reed. You can see he's already opening up a decent gap over Paul Carpenter. 
Upner about two and a half seconds back. Top nine, those are the names in green, scrolling across the top of the screen and transferring straight out of the heats to the main. Paul Carpenter, a rider out of New York, so you know up in the Northeast, motocross racing tends to be a little wet, so in the history, he will have ridden quite a few mud races also. Brian Johnson holding down third. Good run for him. And that looks like Andrew's short back and forth on the 29, the factory Honda rider. And watch out Johnson, he's got his feet out here. He's just slopping his way through the mud. Short also here coming around with the red, white, and blue gear. And Cole Siebler is behind him in fifth. The rider out of Idaho. Privateer running for the Hart and Huntington game. And the track really is getting bad because in the first heat, we saw that the riders were jumping the finish line jump. Now, uh, these riders are having, uh, they're not jumping over that tabletop. So it tells me that the lead up to the finish line uh, is extremely redded. Chad Reed continues to make his way around the infield here in Daytona. We're coming right back. The yellow bike of Ryan Dungey just to the right of our screen, number 28. The rookie has just made his way around Skinner on the 56, who just got stuck and sucked his bike deep into the mud. Skinner stuck in this line here coming through that we talked about has swallowed up riders in each heat. Remember Dusty Platt? Whole shot of the first uh, heat and was leading and gave it up in that same spot. Jeff, this is an important pass too because this was for the final transfer spot out of heat number two. And Dungy just doubles past. Skinner does not complete that little on off. And there goes Chad Reed. That is officially what you call slop. Yeah, if you looked it up in the dictionary, that's it right there. And Jeff, the lap time is just deteriorating right along with the racetrack. Down to a 145-1 for the best lap effort of Chad Reed. And that's the best of this heat, and that's like 10 seconds off of the heat before. And nowhere near what the laps would have been around here had the track been dropped. And taking a look at the track now and seeing what the riders have to go through, I, I think that this track is deteriorating. I think it's a worse condition than what I even thought leading into these heat races that it was going to be. And remember, as the white flag comes out, in the last heat, they were skying over the finish line. We saw passes made there. And now you saw Chad Reed just rolling over instead. Oh, Andrew Short having problems. And he looks like he's falling over. You notice the whole left side of his body and bike. He's got his goggles off. He definitely laid it down in the mud on that side. Short is running third. We'll have to see if he lost any positions. There is the 39 bike. That's Ryan Clark. Jeff, do you remember uh, the muddiest race you ever ran? I've ran quite a few, quite a few mud races in my day, and uh, you know, we keep talking about this. It just has to have the attitude. You have to want to be here and want to race in the mud. If you, if you're really fearing it, if you, if you're like, oh, you know, we should cancel the race or postpone it. You're, you're really not mentally straight for the race. So somebody that wants to be here, wants to win this race, come away with 25 points in the main event. And I'm telling you, the number 22 would like to have 25 when he when he leaves here and pad that points lead. So many points you get for winning an AMA Supercross. Did you enjoy it yourself? I love racing in the mud. Uh, win or lose, I, I just really enjoyed it. I, I love getting out there and getting muddy and dirty and wet all the way through and it, to me I really thought that it took the pressure off of the championship or the race in general. Until you got to clean the gear in the bike right? Well when you're a factory rider everyone does that for you. So. <laughs> Reed, working his way through final couple of corners the checkered flag awaiting him and a trip to the main event. Just terrible conditions out there but a great heat race Chad Reed. Chad Reed takes the checkers at heat number two here in Daytona. We're going to come right back to the Speedway for more racing coming up after these words. What would you pay? What would you pay? Falling here in Daytona since early this afternoon. It has made a mess of the racetrack. 
but has made it very interesting and very intense as far as the racing goes. What a challenge it is just to survive here at Daytona on this wet night in Florida. Let's show you the results from heat number two. Nine more riders have earned the right to go on to the main event. Chad Reed, Cole Siebler, Jacob Marsak among the nine that are going straight to the main. All the way down to Andrew Short. And let's go now to Chad Reed, who's with Aaron Bates. Chad Reed stated that Daytona is probably one of his favorite tracks to race on, but he said that in dry conditions. Chad, is this still your favorite track, and how bad are the conditions out there right now? It's gnarly out there. It's uh, it's by far the, the worst conditions I've ever raced in my life. It's uh, You know, what makes it so tough is, is not so much, it's not muddy because, of, you know, we have sand conditions here. It's the water. The water is so gnarly. You know, every all the holes and everything like that is just filled in with water and, and everything like that. So you're basically just, uh, you know, like I got a... Good old uh, slasher on my side. He's a jet ski champ. So I said, give me some tips and we'll uh, go, get it, uh, go get these guys. Good job in your heat race. Good luck in the main event. Thank you. Tuesday, if you want it hot, check out a whole new season of Superbikes. Speed or style, the sport bike scene is on fire. Push it to the limit on Superbikes. Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific. Part of Premier Week on Speed. Well, the Daytona Supercross by Honda will be memorable, but Bike Week in general always is. And of course, the activity over on Main Street has been a large part of the fun and festivities of Make Up Bike Week 2008. The race is gonna continue over here at the Daytona International Speedway. We'll have it all for you right here on Speed. <laughs> International Speedway, and well, one thing is for sure, the Supercross fans are Determined to watch racing when it's in their area. They have weathered out a brutal storm here this afternoon. There was all kinds of weather issues in and around the Daytona Beach area today. And I think our fans have done way better than the racetrack did here today. As you can see the track crew is out there working on that during the break. While they do that, let's take a look at how this Daytona Supercross racetrack has evolved over the years. While a win at Daytona is important, Getting one has historically been the toughest of any stop on the AMA Supercross circuit. More than half the races run in the Speedway have been won by only five riders. Names like Hannah, Stanton, McGrath, Kudrowski, and Carmichael. Tough legends who are as dominant on the motocross circuits as they were the Supercross stadiums. The Daytona course has been legendary for its long, rough, and sandy layout. For 33 years, it was held during the daytime Florida heat. But in 2004, the race was put under the lights and the course design underwent drastic changes. The last several years, they brought more clay in and they brought it to more of a traditional style Supercross, which now is uh, mostly clay. There's a little bit of sand mixed in there. Um, I think the track has slowed down quite a bit. Well, I think with the, the way that the sport was growing and changing and TV time, uh, you know, they wanted to move the event to a nighttime race, which was, which was fine. But then when the nighttime race came along, then, you know, along came a change of the track and uh, kind of lost its prestigiousness. You know, with it, it was a little more super crossy indoor type and uh, kind of lost that heritage that it had, you know, of it being just rough and whooped out and the dark sand. It's just not that anymore. It's more of a finesse track and you and you have to, you know, you have to be able to ride real Supercross really well to, to do well there. You know, 07 was, was the worst Daytona I ever raced. I, I thought the track was was terrible. It wasn't, uh, wasn't your normal Daytona and uh, they just, it just wasn't a lot of fun, I don't think. The Daytona Supercross has its third different track designer and builder in just four seasons. For the first time ever, two former AMA Supercross champions have teamed up to build the Daytona course. Ricky Carmichael and Mark Barnett were the toughest and fittest riders of their era, and the attitude of the course reflects that in 2008. I thought of some, some great years that I raced it, and things that I liked about it and, and that I heard other riders liked about it and tried to put it in this design this year. And uh, people think, since I'm designing it, they're probably thinking, oh, it's going to be this and that. But hey, I like a fun racetrack as well as I like it to be tough. Uh, I think it'll be safe. 
but, but very technical, and it's going to be back to the way it used to be. It's going to be a man's track. I think the biggest thing that I hope the riders like about it is I believe they'll be able to pass. You know, if they don't get a good start, I think they'll be able to get up alongside somebody. I think uh, the track builder, Mark Barnett, and uh, Glenn Bates are going to do a real good job. Now it's gone back to more sand, so it'll be kind of more of a just creative because it's a flat sand or flat grass surface and we're just going to go in and dig sand pits and think we'll, you know, stuff to build out of this the sand, make it rough. It's an honor to build it actually because it's been there so long and one of the first ones ever and I was uh, glad to get the call to construct a track with the Carmichael design and it will, it, I think it'll be, be good. I think if Ricky could have a lot to do with it and have it his way, uh, I'll take that over over the current one. I think uh, you know I think I, I, I'm behind Ricky on, on what he thinks and, and how he wants that track. I think the old school way was was uh, really tough and exciting, and, and as a rider was really rewarding to win. So I think it's going to get tougher. Uh, I saw the track map. I even talked to him about it a little bit. I think if we could kind of mix it up and you know, bring it back a little bit old school but still keep it uh, with a little bit of clay and supercross. Back when me and Ricky started racing Daytona, um, that's how it was, and I, I know that's how he would probably would like to have it now, so I'm hoping that he makes it as rough and chewed up and beat down as possible. That would, that would be good for me, I think. Well, Jason Thomas is going to love this track, and one thing we know for sure, based on that shot right there, Ricky Carmichael can build a pretty good pool. <laughs> Definitely. And we'll be right back to Daytona for more of the Daytona Supercross by Honda. Riders who have won here more than once, and there were quite a few hurricane warnings through here. Bob Hurricane Hanna took three wins out of Daytona. Of course, Bob Hanna was, was the first legendary rider that really dominated this course, and then came, of course, Jeff Stanton, the Iron Man. Boy, if there was ever an Iron Man in Supercross racing, it was Jeff Stanton, and this racetrack was perfect for him and his style of racing. Then came Kidder. Mike Kedrowski on the number three Kawasaki there. He was just such a physical rider. It was his training program that what catapulted him to these wins. And every year when it came to Daytona, he was the man. The next legend to rack up multiple wins after Mike Kedrowski, well, that would be the king of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy McGrath racked up three wins, 96, 98, 99, and then came the GOAT, greatest of all time. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael. 26 point lead for Ricky Carmichael who takes the checkers for the second consecutive year. And they're side by side. Carmichael repasses Tim Ferry. This will tie him with Jeff Ward for all time wins and he's still coming. Ricky Carmichael does it again for the fourth time consecutively. Right up alongside Reed. A little bit of contact, Ricky Carmichael to the checkered flag, and a record fifth win here at Daytona. I had the pleasure of calling that fifth historic win for the GOAT here at Daytona a couple years back, and Ricky will join us in the booth later on tonight. Well, the rain is falling harder here at Daytona, and you can see they've been working on the track, but it is still going to be a sloppy track. Here's a look at how heats one and two worked out, Jeff. These nine riders from each heat already in the main. And Antonio Balby winning heat one over Kevin Windham, Davey Millsaps. That was just an incredible win for him. Now the last chance qualifier has been completed for the Supercross class as well. And these are the top two riders that transferred out of that. Look, Nathan Ramsey just missing the transfer on the Yamaha. Well. She's been dealing with the weather, is our Aaron Bates. But Aaron, there's also a very unique place you can sit and watch from here at Daytona. That's right, Ralph. Where else in the world do spectators have this unique experience that not only do they have front row seats, they physically get to be standing on the racetrack where just a few short weeks ago, Ryan Newman won the Daytona 500 with speeds of over 200 miles per hour. Well, these fans, they're animals, they're crazy, and they are dedicated, but they better move off to the side after this evening is done, because tomorrow the Daytona 200 is coming through with speeds of over 160 miles per hour. This opportunity, once in a lifetime, what a unique experience. It is a spectacular place to stand and watch the racing here at the Daytona Supercross by Honda. 
Well, there was a historic announcement made just before we began the racing here at the Daytona Supercross by Honda. It was made by the American Motorcyclists Association and the president of the AMA, Rob Dingman, along with Roger Edmondson of the Daytona Motorsports Group, got together and made the announcement. Here's what they had to say. Um, today is a, a very historic day uh, for the American Motorcyclist Association. Uh, this morning the AMA released a statement uh, that uh, announcing that we've entered into an agreement in principle to sell the uh, sanctioning, promotional, and management rights uh, for AMA Pro Racing properties to the Daytona Motorsports Group uh, based here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, and a principal of that uh, organization is Roger Edmondson and also uh, Jim France. We've got some of the greatest athletes in the world participating in all of our various disciplines. We just need to do a better job of making that the story, not the controversies that are a natural byproduct of racing, but the performance that takes place on the racetrack. And that's going to be part of our goals. And we are honored and, and with all humility accept this opportunity uh, as, as, as excited as we can be. I'm trying to be right, real calm right now. I'm jumping up and down inside. I had the opportunity earlier today to sit down with Rob Dingman and Roger Edmondson and discuss this historic announcement with both of them. We'll have that conversation as part of our pre-race show tomorrow before the running of the 67th Daytona 200. It all begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Of course, the Superbike Series will kick off tomorrow too. Tonight, it's Supercross. Come on back with us. Wednesday primetime has a bold... The AMA Superbike Series. Last year, Ben Spees and Matt Maladin dominated. Will anyone be able to challenge for their crown? Tune in and find out tomorrow as the Superbikes take on Daytona at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, only on speed. A little soggy, but having a great time. Fans here in Daytona taking in all the Daytona Supercross by Honda action. And we've had a lot of action. Maybe not the fastest, but some of the most interesting we've seen all year. Well, the Supercross Lights class has been racing here as well tonight. Let's show you the highlights from the East, beginning with heat number one. This was the first bike action on the track. Trey Kennard of the number 48 Honda Jeff got the early jump. Who is totally on a roll. He has just dominated both of the opening rounds here, and he just keeps that train rolling here in this first heat. Number 48 is a points leader in the Supercross Lights East Coast Series. Then we went to heat number two. This is our first look at Ryan Villapoto. And already the track had deteriorated quite a bit. You can just see how sloppy it is. Villapoto gets out front here. Nice start for him. Not so good for others. And this is Coise, he was running second. That's him on the 979 and the problems here as well. And that's McDade who actually was running third. Bike gets stuck. Look at that. End of race for these riders. Not for Ryan Villapoto, the number two. The reigning Supercross Lights West Coast champ going on to the main event. We will show you the main event for the Supercross Lights East Coast Series when we come back to the Daytona International Speedway. For more Supercross after this. Sunday, NASCAR race. Daytona Supercross by Honda here on speed. If you think that looks like a mess, you should see what's on the weather radar headed our way. Oh, the race is on for sure to finish this race off tonight before we get drowned here in Daytona. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Ralph Shaheen along with Jeff Emick, of course. And look who's joined us, the guy who's won here five times more than anybody else. The GOAT, greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. And RC, I assume when you designed this place and you put pen to paper, this wasn't what you had in mind. No, it wasn't. Uh, you know, I had more of the traditional old school Daytona, a lot more dirt, a little less jumps. And, uh, of course, Mother Nature has hooked us up tonight, and <laughs> nothing we can do, really. But uh, it, it's going to be interesting, I believe. Oh, it has been that already. So who do you two think this track favors, if anybody? Well, I think that it favors uh, somebody that gets a good start, somebody that likes to, you know, stand on the pegs and ride the bike like uh you know, like a Kevin Windham, but we've really seen the track deteriorate quite a bit. Ricky, <laughs> you rode the track yesterday when it was dry, but what do you, what do you think about track, this main event? Track was awesome yesterday, but uh, you know what? The, the, the cool thing about it is I don't, I don't think we can pick a winner, really. It's anybody's game tonight. It uh, kind of brings the feel back, if you will. Well, here's Definitely. a look at you riding this place last night. We had the opportunity to watch you from up here, and you looked like you haven't lost any form. <laughs> No, you know, I, uh, I've been riding every now and then, and uh, bike was working pretty good. Track was good, so it makes me yeah. look good. Well, well, definitely I think that a rider who is a good starter 
uh, the start's going to be key tonight. Would you agree? Absolutely. And another thing, too, is staying up on two wheels. They, uh, that, that is underestimated so much by a lot of riders, how, how important that is. Let's take a look at the Kawasaki track map, and you can point out some of the obstacles you designed into the circuit here. All right, little start there. Down the first turn, left turn. Coming down here, I got some moguls after the first turn. A lot of sand sections, you know, I think that uh, naturally sand gets really, really rough, naturally. Little pretty uh, rolled out whoop section, not too hard, just gets gets harder as the as the night wears on. Some sand pits and uh, pretty pretty cool little section after the finish line there. Oh, are you ready to go racing here for the main events? <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty after 10 laps. All right, well you stay up here, stay dry with us. We got main events coming. It is sloppy, but you know what? It's a Daytona Supercross by Honda. It's the biggest race of the year. It's next. Contest where one lucky dude will win a trip to Vegas for the Supercross Finals. Hang out with the Kawasaki dudes and then take home your very own Kawasaki KX 450F motorcycle. Log on to SpeedTV.com, keyword dude, now. Well, as the rain continues to fall and falls harder, here's Aaron Bates with a progressive free race report. Well, guys, the rain is coming down like you wouldn't believe, which may help release a little bit of pressure for the number 41 of Matt Gerke, but all the pressure in the world is on his shoulders, he said, because tonight he's racing in front of his hometown crowd, and he's given over 300 tickets up for all of his family and friends to attend here. He's had a rough season. He just got third in his heat race, but his ninth place finish last weekend was his best finish so far this season. Due to a couple of injuries, he's hoping that tonight's going to be that night that he's going to take that win. Ready to go. Here we go. Well, that whole shot is so important, isn't it, Ricky? Oh, man. Uh, how many guys do you think are saying, let me get to the first turn? Oh, Philip oh, off oh, the track. Yeah. Do the moguls. And is that Kennard out front on the 48? It looks like. Yes. yes. It is Kennard, but it was Josh Grant that was there with the whole shot. He got messed up going through mid-turn and everybody came around the outside of it. There's still a photo sitting back in third and that's hugely important because the Supercross East Coast Lights points battle is a hot one between Kennard on the 48 and Villapoto on that green Kawasaki back in third. And how about Kennard? Once again, he gets right out front. He already has about a 15 bike lead. This kid is for real. This is only his third Supercross of his professional career. I mean, he is really amazing. I mean, he is rising to the occasion. I mean, it's raining cats and dogs out here, and the guy is just uh, performing. And what that does is that puts this pressure on a veteran like Ryan Villapoto, who came in with all the momentum, all of the expectations. He knows that Kennard's out front. He's had trouble beating this young rider, so it really has added pressure to uh, you know an already pressure-filled uh, year for Villapoto. Ricky, at the beginning of the year, there wasn't one person in the industry that wouldn't have told you that Ryan Villapoto is not only going to win this title, he's going to dominate it. He's done anything but that. What's going on with him? You know, I don't. Th I, I I believe that he's been put in a position that uh, he don't want to be in. You know what I mean? It seems that uh, you know he just. Uh, he, he's, he's being put under pressure. He's been in that position before, but I think that he thought it was going to be a little bit easier for him. He's caught off guard. And how much do you know about the two injuries that he suffered in the offseason? Because they've been kind of quiet about it. Yeah, you know, anyone at his top level, and, and like yourself, when you were racing, you keep it really tight-lipped. So it's, it's, it's hard to say, but uh, he's doing pretty good. On the flip side of that, Jeff, Trey Kinnock, our race leader, has not felt the pressure and has not, more importantly, been intimidated by any of that preseason talk. How does he pull that off? Well, I think all of that is getting ready to change because Villapoto is on a mission right now. Villapoto won so many races in the motocross championship. This is a motocross-style situation, and uh, Villapoto is reeling Trey Kennard in right now. Well, I'll tell you what, Kennard is riding these obstacles in a way that a lot of others haven't tonight. You know, the track is always good to the first few laps of the lights main event. They go out, they fix the track a little bit, prep it up. This track is going to really deteriorate, and uh, I look for Villapoto to start start making a move here pretty quick. There's the 116 of Morris, and he's running around in fourth place right now. And watch the water holes right through here. This one, oh, oh, like two and a half, three feet deep. 
that that is amazing. And, and, and as you mentioned earlier, Jeff, it's getting worse and worse. And you can't, you have no depth perception of how deep it is. Not only is the track getting worse, but as you can see through the camera, the rain falling harder and harder. And lightning flashing off in the distance as well as Ryan Morris here watching. Oh, look at this! Uh -oh. The battle for the lead now! Uh -oh. Trey Kennard on the red Honda number 48, and Ryan Villapoto on the Kawasaki, the green bike, running in second. And remember, guys, Kennard has led every Supercross light East Coast race lap but one so far this year. And he, and, he, and he continues on, but what's important is that Kennard, even though this is a huge race and he wants to win it, he wants to do what he, he can. It looks like Villapoto crashed. Here he is, right here. He's Villapoto gave up some serious time running time. through that section. Well, you know, Big it seemed time. like uh, Villapoto got behind him. I think that uh, Kennard was messing with his goggles by the mechanic area, and then Villapoto made the mistake. Now he's back out. Let's see what he did. Let's go back and take a look at Villapoto. Watch the number two. Oh, he goes. Oh, look, he goes in between the track there. Oh, he goes over the berm too. Over the it berm, was, through oh, the top man. blocks, and that cost him a ton of time. He was all over the place. He was to the inside, entering the turn, went straight through the turn, over the outside, and once again, the pressure bites Villapoto, not Kennard. And and the thing that I was talking about is that Kennard. Sure, he wants to win this race, but if Villapoto really puts the pressure on him and reels him in, it's okay. He's got a huge points lead over Villapoto, so in a night like tonight, you want to limit the mistakes. If you have the opportunity to win, of course, you go for it, but second is as good as a win here tonight. Absolutely. You know, that is, a, a second place is better than a fifth place, and uh, if he keeps it on two wheels, I'm telling you what, man, it, I, it, it, that will be amazing for Canard. Oh, oh, put it down oh, again! Oh, he falls down again by the mechanic's turn. Unbelievable. And the bottom has absolutely fallen out of the sky on this. Jeff, how tough is it to pick that bike up like that? Well, it, it's difficult when you know that, uh, you know, things aren't going right. And Villapoto, once again, is he really is trying hard. Would you agree, Ricky? Absolutely. And he does not. He is, Trey Kennard is in his head. He is. I mean, look at that. Those, you didn't see those mistakes at all last year. No. And it just seems like, you know, he, he lost time the lap before, and here we go. He's going through the moguls here. You guys see? He's going outside, missing the ruts. He loses. Oh, he hits a tough block, loses his front end, and then just, boom, slips down, and the rest is history. And at that point in time, too, your heart rate gets way up, Ricky. And how much does that compel? Oh, man, when your heart rate goes up, then you're trying to recover. It, it has a huge effect, and you're holding on so tight. Exactly. He's holding on extremely tight and the thing is Villapoto was by far the favorite coming into this. Canard, hey, just get your feet wet. It's your first year. Now, Villapoto, who was so touted as the favorite, not only by the teams, the media, the fans, now he has not won yet and so he definitely does not want to let a rookie come in and steal the show and that's exactly what Canard is doing. One of the biggest problems facing Ryan Villapoto is the fact that when the races are over, he's got to go back and face team owner Mitch Payton, and he <laughs> likes to win. And Mitch is very used to winning. He's a very successful team race owner, and uh, I'm telling you, man, it, it, he is not very happy, and Ryan should be doing better than he's doing. I don't know if, like you mentioned earlier, his injuries are, have a bigger effect than what we think, uh, or, but you got to give it to Kennard. The guy is rising to the occasion. The conditions are horrible. He's, he's hooking it up. Well, you know about riding for Mitch. You did it years ago. Let's go back and take a look at our progressive hole shot replay. Now watch through the center of your screen. Huge hole shot here. Wow. Look how muddy that is. And guys, at home, you have no idea how hard it is to keep your bike up. Yeah, Second and that was Grant, too. That was Grant that was there first. His teammate, Kennard, came into the first turn about four, snuck through the inside when everybody else went wide. Now Kennard has got it, and he is in. Oh, 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 oh down he goes. down, he missed the run there with his front end. Now, where is Villapoto? Oh, he kept the bike running, though. He where kept the bike is running. Ryan? He should be shortly behind him. He's fixing his goggles. Still don't see him yet. Oh, there he is. There he is. Now listen, after the second of Villapoto's crashes, he had only been two seconds behind him. Those two miscues dropped him to 15 seconds behind Kennard, but now that 
has short probably half. You know, and, and I was just to say, right before Kennard fell, he looked so smooth to me and relaxed, not tight. And then he went and well, he actually, he wasn't right at control, he just missed the rut with his front wheel. And we're only halfway through this race, Kevin. Yeah, and, and, and Kennard made a mistake there that you're going to expect to see on nights like tonight. But he had such a cushion with that 15 seconds. I'm sure that a little bit of it, uh, you know, nervousness came in, but now he's back in control, lower the heart rate. Well, the racing continues here in Daytona, and the Ducks are just getting comfortable. The rain is pounding the racetrack, and we'll be back for the finish. Welcome to Honda's ATV. Here in the Supercross Lights East Coast main event at the Daytona Supercross by Honda in some of the most unbelievable conditions we've ever witnessed for a Supercross. Welcome back to the Daytona International Speedway. Ralph Shaheen, Jeff Emick, and Ricky Carmichael joining us in the booth. Aaron Bates breaking out the snorkel and enjoying the racing down in the rain. Chasing Kennard is Ryan Villapoto. And these two not only battling on the track, but in the points. And Ricky, when it's raining this hard, does that change the vision as well as all the mud getting slopped up into your goggles? Oh, absolutely. It changes the conditions. But I will say this. These riders are probably happy it's raining as far as the conditions on the track goes. The track is mud is much easier to ride when it is raining. It just kind of, you know, thins the mud out a little bit and uh, it, it doesn't dry up and get as thick. Yeah, it's really sloppy out there, but when they hit these water holes, like right here, it actually rinses the bike off. It's not, it doesn't clean it, but it rinses the heavy mud off. It's much easier to ride. Jeff, how tough are these conditions on the machines themselves? Well, it's pretty tough because you have the engine trying to pull this air through the air box, through the air filter. Uh, you know, four strokes especially pump quite a bit of volume of air through the engine. That's that's really what it is, this huge air pump. So it you know, be difficult here. You know, it it is, seems like the four, four strokes had a, uh, you know, want, have a tendency to overheat a little bit more, run a little hotter in the mud. To me, I thought, you know, to me, I thought, I know you didn't do much racing on the four stroke, Jeff, but uh, I always was worried about these things overheating. Guys, he's riding very aggressive. Oh. He's got three laps to go. He's in the lap traffic. Do you think maybe he's riding almost too aggressive? No, I think that the guy is in the groove. I mean, we were talking earlier during break. He looks so comfortable, and the conditions are so gnarly. When you, Jeff can attest to this. When you're in that groove, you are in that groove, man. Oh, yeah, he's definitely mentally strong right now. Look at this, Jeff. Over the finish line jump in these conditions. Look at Kennard. <laughs> and he really has to stretch it out. You see, he came up really short, but. He got lined up, he was sitting down on the seat, he seen a clear line and he was balanced, so he just hammered the throttle. And that was a good move, especially right here. You see Trey still making his way through those rhythm sections, trying to complete every little double that he can. Quarter of a second there, quarter of a second there. Absolutely, and that adds up, adds oh, up. Oh, hey. Little front height, like for you yeah. guys at home, that looked out of control, but when you are in that groove and everything is clicking, you can't do nothing wrong, and he feels comfortable. And look how the front of his bike, that number plate, that 48, it's like it doesn't have any mud on it, and he's really slowed it down right now. He's having an issue with his goggles. There's just so much water coming up. Yeah, and you know, trust me, you guys, he, he knows where Villapoto is, so he knows the limit he has to take it to. He knows how much pressure he's got, and I don't see him any Villa, Villapoto anywhere in sight. No, he's a good 11 seconds behind. I mean, he just, he, 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 I am really impressed with this guy. I mean, he is, he's on rails. Yeah, he, he has been unfazed. And uh, he said it early on right. with the, with the uh, entering the opening round of this championship that he, he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't intimidated by any of the veterans or any of the favorites. He was going to give it his best each and every race. I talked to him earlier today. He said, once again, I just want to do my best. Of course I'd like to win, but I'm more focused on giving it my best effort, and that's all you can do. Here's Ryan, 15 seconds back now. I mean, Ryan is trying. I, you got to give it to him. He's he is really, really trying. Well, and the pressure is on for a, a rider like Villapoto, and there's, you know, he's won so many races in the last couple of years that he just does not want to get involved anymore. And take a look here, Villapoto, does not have his goggles on, guys. Yeah, I saw him rip them off back in the corner of the street. You know, the worst thing you can do, and it's so hard not to do, is take your goggles off, because that's the first thing you want to do. Man, I mean, look at the conditions out there. 
I mean, you guys, I mean, it is so hard. There goes Kennard. Here we go, Kennard chunking him. Okay. I can understand Kennard chunking his goggles with a couple laps to go. He's in the lead. And, he's, you know, when you chunk your goggles, it's almost like you got clear vision. There's not too many guys ahead of him. And he could probably actually get a couple tenths faster a lap being like this. Yeah, no, no sense in suffering if you don't have to at this point. Yeah, and the pace is so slow right now. It's really wet. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's like you're just out there riding a mini bike around, playing around like when you were a kid. But a uh, whole lot more on the line. He's got 25 points that he's going after. Another win. All three in the East Coast Lights Championship I, by a rookie. I'm starting, I'm starting to get concerned about uh, my little deal I did in 98 there at first. You know, when they said Villapoto was riding the East Coast, I'm like, well, there goes my uh, my record there when I won the eighth straight. Now I'm, just, I, I'm getting a little concerned here about Bernard. <laughs> There's someone I didn't even think about. So's Villapoto. Yeah. He's thinking the same thing. Somebody he didn't think about. And this young rider out of Oklahoma wow. has just taken the white flag and is one lap away from the biggest win of his young career, a Supercross Lights victory at the historic Daytona International Speedway. And right now he's got his fingers crossed, well, figuratively speaking, that there's no problems with the bike, that he keeps it on two wheels. I cannot explain how bad the situation, how bad the track is and the weather right now. It is, I mean, it's brutal. I'm not sure that I've ever seen a Supercross this bad. You think it's bad now? Yeah, the Supercross guys get out here in a few minutes, Hey, right? but that's, that's what it's about. The Supercross is the elite class. The conditions are tougher, the bikes are faster, and uh, it's the best of the best. And there's quite a bit of steam coming off of the 48 right now, a Honda. Oh, oh look man, at that. he needs to stay out of the wet conditions like that if he can. I know it's kind of hard, but uh, he's Ricky, made it this far. Ricky, the one thing I, I know about you is you know how to build a really good pool. Oh, yeah. The way this I, track do, I, out. I do. <laughs> hey, I didn't intend on it being that that muddy. There's, there's no doubt about it. The thing about it is, guys at home, the reason it's so so muddy and big puddles is we're digging in into the dirt. And just a few turns left here for Kennard. He knows. He's taking a look back over his left side there. He sees where Villapoto is at. See him yep. just putting his feet out here, look not up. wanting to make any mistakes. But wow. also, take a look at it with just three or four turns left. That bike is steaming. Wow. That Can is the scary. Honda make it this final turn? <laughs> I mean, to Daytona Supercross, how unreal it would be for this rookie to win Daytona Supercross. What did it feel like to you when you won your first race here? Oh, man, this is the one that anybody wants to win. You ask them a Supercross they want to win, it is Daytona Supercross. And here we go. Well, guess what? Trey Kennard is just about to do it. He's going to take a checkered flag, his third of the year. He has done it. Trey Kennard wins a Daytona Supercross by Honda Supercross Lights East Coast Round. Wow. And look at how thrilled he is to do it. What a ride. Unbelievable. We'll be right back to talk to this young rider. Daytona bike. Pounding the fans, pounding the racetrack. Shining bright is Trey Kennard. He takes the win. His first here at Daytona, his third of the year. And look at Matt Bonney. What a great run. Shows that conditions like this helps out everybody and really equals out the field. He runs to third just in front of Ben Coise. Hey, let's go meet our winner, Trey Kennard, standing by with Aaron. Can anybody stop Trey Kennard? That is the big question. Coming in here tonight, Ryan Villapoto was the man to beat, but Trey, you handed it to him. No questions asked. How are you managing to do this on your rookie season? Man, I'm just going out there every time, just giving it everything I've got. And uh, I couldn't do it without the Lord just Christ to keep me safe. I mean, that was all him out there. It's uh, got to give him the credit for that. And uh, the whole team behind me, Torque Car Racing Fuels Honda, uh, Planet Fitness Gems, AMS Oil, uh, No Fear Energy. Uh, my mechanic, Brent, my family, uh, Shannon Nida, Greg Dorenzo. Man, that was crazy. I'm, I'm just glad I uh, came out of Daytona with points, you know. That's, the track is so crazy right now. But uh, Talk about the conditions and talk about the track. Man, the water, it's, it's still dumping right now. And, uh, man, it's just it's so wet. It, the mud isn't even the deal. It's just the water splashing everywhere. It's, it's crazy. Trey Kennard, the rookie, he keeps extending that points lead. Now you can get the latest race results and news right on your phone with weekly green alerts from Speed. Text KX to 773333 on your mobile phone to receive free motorcycle racing text alerts. Speed green alerts presented by Kawasaki. Well, it's already a bit of, bit of a historical night here at Daytona with Trey Kennard winning the Supercross main up next right after this. 
Riders for the Supercross main event in the gate, getting set to go racing. And guys, take a look at this. This is water all through here. It was grass before. Now it's just completely sopping wet. So right out of the gate, it's just like a jet ski race. All right, Ricky, where do you want to be in that gate? You know what? I'm, on a day like today, if you have uh, if you have the first gate pick, you want to go condition before position. I Good learned point. that from a team teammate of mine. If you had the first position tonight, you don't want to take it because you had the first position. You want to take the condition of the gate, condition before position. First choice went to Antonio Balbi, and let's go to Aaron for a progressive pre-race report. When Ricky Carmichael designed this track, he knew it was going to be rutted, and he knew it was going to be chopped out, but I don't think he was expecting or intending on these ruts being as deep as they are. In some areas, the ruts are over four feet deep, very, very, very deadly. It's catching the bikes. In fact, if the bike gets stuck in one of these ruts, the whole back end is disappearing. It's really difficult for the rider to get the bike out of the rut, first of all, and secondly, if they do get it out, to get that bike restarted. It's a tough track. You've seen lying around some carcasses of bikes. Smoke is steaming out of these bikes. We're kind of calling it a boneyard down here in the mud, but line selection is going to be key for all of these guys this evening. If they choose the right line, they're going to stay out of the deep puddles in the water. Aaron, what are the chances you dry out before we get to Minneapolis next week? I don't think that's going to happen, but I think it must be me because the rain seems to be following us everywhere we go this season, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. In fact, we've joked that the AMA rule really stands for American Moisture Association. All right, there's Chad, Chad Reed on the 22, and, and Jeff, he was Chad. all the way out there before. Here's our starting grid across the top. Here's Reed. Oh, Reed gets, gets pinched off on the inside there. He probably started on the inside for security. Look at him, though. Look at that. Great. Look what at that. Move, man. He's right to second, maybe to the what lead. Move. That's Carpenter. Carpenter. And he got a good start in his heat race, didn't he, Paul Carpenter? Paul Coleman Carpenter out there, second place. Reed trying to stretch Reed. it out over a couple of river section jumps here, turning those doubles into flight time. Wow, look at those guys can't even oh. double the tough double the jumps. It's so bad. Split pea soup, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I'd, I'd like to try a mud soup, maybe <laughs> mud pie, if you will. Definitely. Uh, look at Reed keeping that front end high. Oh, wow, look how. Whoa! Oh, oh and he's oh going my off gosh. the track. Holy cow! Unbelievable. I've and never seen anything like that. And that's the thing about this is that the track, the lights oh riders in the race before this would have known that was there. This is their first time around here since the conditions have really got bad. There is so much rain still coming down right now. That's Wyndham right there. Kevin Wyndham on the 14. Tons of lightning outside also. Okay, so now it's set up. Chad Reed, the points leader, is out front. Kevin Windham sets second in points. He's the one that really is hoping to capitalize on something, this weather, changing something in the championship. Yeah, Windham look at Windham closing second. in. Closing in on him. And they have shortened this race. Oh, here he comes right around the look outside. Windham. Wow, Reed look at in. look how much worse it is. Look how bad the conditions are compared to the last lap of the lights. Puddles are bigger, conditions are worse. This race has gone from wow. 20 to 15 to 10 laps in length. 12 laps, I should okay, say. Okay, and I'm telling you guys, both of these riders are extremely talented Supercross racers. Kevin Windham has never won here. He has that extra incentive to go out and get in the Daytona record books, get his name on the plaque. He sees Chad Reed up front, he needs, he's going to do everything he can in the next 11 laps to steal this win away from Chad Reed. Wyndham is over 8, and we saw Reed making a, a hand gesture, it looked like about his goggles to the mechanics. Yeah, he's probably just telling his mechanics that he either needs new goggles. You know, Reed has such a big points lead, he just needs to be smart and maximize. Oh, points. here he comes, Wyndham! Wyndham around the outside! Cut him off, oh, and he just get drenched. I mean, when you are right behind somebody, you guys, I mean, when the guy in front of you goes in front of a puddle, just like. And here's one of the worst sections right through here. If you're wondering what all the smoke is, they lit off a bunch of fireworks just as the main got underway, and that's the smoke clearing the area. Okay, you know what Kevin Wyndham's probably gonna do now, now that he's just been doused by like 100 gallons of water, it feels like, is he's gonna probably wait for either Chad to make a mistake, or plan his pass to where he can't get uh, splashed by water again. I mean, yeah, you can't use he so gonna, close, you can't pass. He definitely now at this point needs to work on his lines. Take a look at the replay here. Watch how bad wow. Kevin what? Windham is getting splashed. And watch Chad Reed pulling his, his uh, roll-offs there. And you see he pulled it two or three times. 
Wow. Terrible. Oh, he's off course he's again. He's off course again. And still in the front, still in the lead. Wow. This race has only been won one, one time by a true privateer. That was back in 1987. It was a day race, but another very muddy, wet, rainy day. And that was Rick Ryan. Yeah, and, and it was a muddy day. It wasn't a wet day like this. What an incredible ride by Rick Ryan that day. People talk Whoa. about that all the time. Wow. And by the way, speaking of that, Balby, who won his heat race, sits in third. And Ryan Dungey, who's not a privateer, but a Rookie. Rookie at this in the Supercross class. He's running in fourth. I tell you what, Balby, what a great story, man. The guy could barely get barely get here, had to fly private when he got stuck in Dallas. He's having the ride of his career. That was yesterday. They didn't get here till this morning, he, right? He was very fortunate. They snowed out in Dallas. The airline snowed out in the the host of other factory teams hired a private jet. Balby hitched the ride. And it's having a nice like stream race. Oh, oh, somebody going to the pits. Who's that? It's a Yamaha. Into the mechanics area. Maybe probably getting a fresh set of goggles. I don't really know what that do for you. You know, here today. I do not think that pulling in for goggles, just once you have to take them off, take them off, and you got to ride the rest of the race. The conditions are so bad. There's Ryan Dungey Ryan Dungey, right look there. At that, look at that water. He's up to third. Ryan Dungey on podium spot right now. Seems like he would be a really good mud rider, real tall on the bike. Look how wet that is. And guys, what a turn of events. Remember last year in the East Coast Lights race here, Dungey didn't qualify for this race. Wow. <laughs> I, I, you guys, look at look at that. I mean, right there, you want to keep your front end as high as you can. I know it's probably pretty hard, but I just, I'm almost speechless. And the, and the reason is because the, when you plow the front wheel into the into those water holes, there's a better chance that the engine is going to suck a lot of water through the air box. But fight for fourth. That's Dusty Cloud on the 63 and Balby on the 55. There he is in the red Honda. Wow. Oh, oh Chad Reed. Chad Reed down. Problem. There goes Wyndham. Wyndham goes by, oh, Reed gets it restarted. Side, try to get, make the pass back on him. Don't make uh -oh. a mistake right now. Biggest thing right, oh, biggest man. thing right here is Reedy can't get excited and fry his clutch out or do anything like that and overheat his Look at, he's off the course there. Uh, I mean, when you so see him difficult. getting excited and revving his bike, you really can't do that. you got to be careful. Kevin Windham, 0 for 8 here in Daytona. Could this be the night? Remember, he won the last huge mud race in Anaheim in 2005. Wow. And you can really see how Chad Reed has lifted his intensity. Here's what happened to Reed. Oh, oh, oh he stalls the bike. Reed, he stalls the bike. And now Reed and Wyndham continuing to battle. Oh, here we go. Reed going to the outside. Oh, he gets stuck. Oh, 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 oh Wyndham is stuck. Done. He's stuck. Oh, Kevin, so frustrating. How oh, difficult. Oh, man. He stalled the bike also. Oh, he can't get it going. He's sucking. There he goes. He's got it back going, guys. He stalled the bike, got sucked oh, into the deep conditions. Man. Oh, now, now, Kevin. I know, De I, wrote, I know Ryan Dungey's getting him close. Here goes Reed, back in the front. But you've got to wonder, how long will it remain that way? We're coming back to Daytona. Sunday, NASCAR race day. To Daytona, and Chad Reed is off the bike again, the leader. And the engine is off. He got the bike in neutral. He's trying to restart. He dropped it in the There's water. There's Wyndham again. Look at him, look. He's going to call he one can't. side. He can can't, do I don't know if he, he can do that. He, he did not enter the track where he went off, and it was he took quite a bit of an advantage there. Yeah, I, he made that's that's really be questionable. That's a gray area right there. It's a pretty brown area, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at Is that Ryan Dungey behind those guys? Yes. It could be. Wow. And wow. That, it is Dungey. It, wow. We got a three-way battle, you guys. Remember, oh, Dungey oh, didn't oh, even oh, 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 He's up. Uh, Oh, oh, he stalls. Oh, Dungey, who didn't even make the lights race last year, sitting in third, but with a stalled bike. And the crowd, as small as it is here tonight, is very enthusiastic and going crazy over all of this. Wow. I tell you what, we, Ricky, it's one of those things where it's nice to be up here in the booth, but it's so much fun to be out there racing, battling like this. Oh, yeah, that is, this is a fun race. I tell you what, whoever wins this main event, it's got to be one of the best of their careers, if oh. not the best in these conditions. It is one of the slowest races I think I have ever seen, but one of the most drama-filled events of all time.
lead. Listed in the lead for now. Wow, look, look at those. That. I mean, or do you, I think you just hold on, gas it, and go. Feet off the pegs. Man, look at that. Reedy keeping it up. Slopping through it. Man, just going wide open. Just hoping for the best. Literally, it is right so now. bad right now. Jeff, he, dipping down. Jeff, you describing this start as a jet ski race is a perfect example of what this really is. Well, and watch Chad Reed here. He comes through, goes off the side of the track Ooh. when he hits the water hole. And, oh. Very far, I mean, he actually landed on that tough block and the bike was stood up on there, so the bike did not kill oh, 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 I don't know. And every little mistake like that that Chad has, you know, you know that Kevin Wyndham is back there somewhere. So you're gonna try to limit the mistakes and keep your momentum going forward. Looks like he's lost his goggles too, guys. Yeah, he's chunked them. I he's, think you know, everybody yeah. has lost their goggles yeah, at this it, point. It's really hard to keep them on when it's raining. You know, the rain gets in between your roll-offs, your tear-offs, it gets in it, uh-oh, uh-oh. How, how about the overall weight of your gear getting soaked? You know, and that, and you slide off the back, you can't hold on, your gloves are wet. I, I haven't seen a mud race this bad in a long time. I think the only, the, the worst mud race I ever think I saw was 1991, maybe uh, Sacramento. Yeah, I mean, it was hey, 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 motocross, hey, yeah. and it was, it was this wet. There was just so much. It's clay up there, and it was just a very wet race. But I'm telling you, I think this is the worst conditions that I've ever seen uh, a motocross bike be got, ridden in. It's got to be the hardest because there's so many jumps and obstacles. Well, it, with your track design, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying that it was particularly you, but the track design has just made it go from like lake to lake to lake to lake yeah. down the... <laughs> I knew that was gonna be a, I thought that was gonna be a problem if it rained. I'm guessing the two of you are thinking right about now this is a really good time to be retired. No, I, I, I tell you what, it's fun if you're out front like 20 seconds in the lead, but if you're Seven? Ryan Dungey or Kevin Wyndham's position right now, I, I think myself and Jeff's position is looking pretty good. At Guys, this we're only halfway through this. And we, wow. Not only the riders take a pounding Ooh. out here, but those motorcycles have got to be feeling the wear and tear of this event as well. Look at Reed. I mean, he's just cruising. It's so, the conditions are so gnarly, the guy can like barely charge it all, you know? Is that Wyndham there? No. No. That's a lapper. Yeah, that's a lapper. Well, where Nick is Way, that was Nick Way there. Where is Wyndham? There's Kevin coming through there. He's He's got rid of his goggles. And see what Kevin Wyndham was doing through that section? He's still doubling. He's on the pegs. Classic Kevin Wyndham riding style. He's trying to stand up on the bike and balance it. That's really where he, his advantage is right now. Very nice to watch ride. I mean, I really, really like to watch a guy that's got great style. Well, and we've spent so much time with Kevin Wyndham this year as he's had so much success. He says he's had a great time racing. And in this situation, pressure's off, but halfway through this race, he still wants to win this thing. He realizes this is a huge opportunity, and whoever wins this is gonna go down as just this classic Daytona mud race. Yeah, at, at this point, I think, you know, Kevin's lost a little bit of ground. I believe that uh, I believe that he's just gonna bide his time and maybe hope for a mistake. But look, look at Millsap there coming up through. He's now in the third position. Well, it has been both of the Honda riders and Wyndham and Millsap that have really pressured Chad Reed. Ooh. And, and uh, it is so difficult out there. Oh, and those two <laughs> riders, a big part of Honda's resurgence in Supercross this year, as Millsaps took the win in Atlanta, and it was. Just a week before that, the Wyndham won in Houston. Hey, Ricky, tell me, I've never written for Team Honda. You did. Coming into this event, Honda being the title sponsor. Kevin oh. Wyndham's pulling in for goggles. Going for goggles. Oh, man. I don't know about that call, Jeff. It is definitely I questionable. I would agree with you, Ricky. But evidently, something has happened. He said, OK, look, I think I can make up some time if I can see. So we'll see just how long those goggles last. We'll, well keep a real eye on he it. He was about 13 seconds behind Reed, and he had about an eight second gap between him and Millsap. And that was at the stripe uh, just before he pulled into the uh, into the uh, mechanics area. There's Millsap there. So, oh, so what I was saying, Ricky, is how important is it? Oh, oh there he goes! Man. Man. Davey Millsap. Look at that deep hole. You just go there. You don't even know. You don't even know. And here, here comes Wyndham. 
The new goggles paying off for him. And, and Ricky, what I keep trying to tell you is these guys are trying to make the pass for one of these riders to win the event. The event was sponsored by Honda. Got it. It's huge. Yeah, right? I mean, obviously it is. You know, it's a Honda sponsored event. It is the Daytona Honda Supercross. Uh, but it's big for every manufacturer. It really is. I mean, this is. This is the crown jewel of the series. If you can't win the title, you have got to try to win Daytona Supercross. Yeah, but any pressure specifically on the Red Riders here? Uh, possibly. Possibly so. Well, the lap times are up to two minutes. Wow. <laughs> 30 seconds faster than the heats. Longer. Wind of just plowing through it. I mean, I cannot. Would you like to go out and ride a couple laps, Jeff? Hey, if somebody was going to watch the bike. <laughs> now, when would we have known if the AMA is going to have a thought on Chad Reed going off course like that? Because it could be Kevin Windham who just retook the lead from Davey Millsap. There is Chad Reed. And we know Chad Reed is committed to racing here tonight, as are all the riders who lined up in the gate. But how about the greatest fans in the world, these Supercross fans, sticking it out here in the downpour at Daytona. A great crowd on hand, taking in the Daytona Supercross by Honda. Chad Reed continues to lead here at the Daytona Supercross by Honda. Working our way past the halfway point. And has really been the Iron Man here tonight. He has put on an awesome ride. He's crashed, he's had problems, and he keeps going, keeps moving forward. Just an incredible ride with only five, four to go now. Well, that's why he's been a Supercross champion before. He's a fighter. Uh, I gotta give it to the guy, man. He never lays down, and look, he stalled it and fell down. Look at that. Look at his face in wow. there, Ricky. I mean, that is just grit and... So much focus in, a, in an environment where it is so hard to focus. And you see the extra thing on his visor right here, that's extra actually lengthened out so that he can duck his head when he's getting roost from another rider and still see forward. So just a slight tip of the helmet will stop all of the mud and water from coming into your eyes. You know, another thing too, he don't have hand guards. So no. his, his hands are getting extra wet. Yeah, but on a night like tonight, it, it just gets matter. washed off. Watch right through this section right here. It's oh, extremely oh. deep. Right oh, oh man. We've seen so many people crash there. Well, look who might be joining you here, Ricky. If Chad Reed can hang on and win here tonight. Hey, he's much well-deserved it. There's no <laughs> doubt about it, especially in this condition. I mean, this has got to, if he wins tonight, this has got to be one of the best Supercross wins of his career. And he's chasing his second Supercross championship this year, leading the points, and this would be huge for him tonight if he could win and get Ab those extra points over Kevin Windham. Absolutely, cushion that points lead a little bit more and uh, get into some dry dirt next weekend. Now we have heard from the AMA that there will not be, at this point, there's been no decision made on Chad Reed. Yeah, I mean, and we're talking you about could. the incident when he when he fell down and then he got back up and, and kind of outside that. Look at that bike. Oh. <laughs> what, I think in this situation you just try to pick the bike up. I don't know if that's Travis Preston or. Who I mean, have you ever seen Cadillac Ranch in Texas? Yeah, it was like a Cowie Ranch. Yeah, I would say this is a. Is, is that a green bike? It's yeah, all brown. Somewhere in there, there's some green. <laughs> well, I'm colorblind, so that might be Jeff Gibson. I think, just gonna I let think it stay. Guy, yeah, he just he needs to go back to the truck. Hey, but that's a huge photo op. What he needs oh, to do yeah. is. Clean Clear the sponsor logos off of his deal because that photo is going to get shown everywhere. Okay? That might just, be here tomorrow when we go green for right. the 67th running wow. of the Daytona 200. I mean, look at Reed, he's still out there charging along. He's going all over the place, but I, I, everybody is at this position. Hey, and the Yamaha guys, they got their fingers crossed right now that that engine keeps, keeps on pumping He's smoking too. I mean, it, it, he's got smoke. Ricky, one of the things we've always talked about with Chad Reed is how gritty of a rider he is. He rides through injured. Look at this. They're going to bury this thing. <laughs> this guy, he's just having fun with it now, I think. This is incredible. You see the back tires over here a little bit. 
He's trying to get some uh, help from the crowd. I can honestly say that in all of my years of racing, and Ricky, we could probably stack all of your years on, that I've never <laughs> had to stand on top of my bike. I've never had to do that. I, I, okay. I, I, can I thought racing I agree with you. Uh oh, here's that deep hole. Here's that Look deep that. hole. Wow. Look at that. If he only knew how many people we have seen up here. Go down in that hole and take that line that, that, that he just took. He'd be going outside. Probably. And it is, it is so soupy out there, like Ricky was talking about earlier, that it's not deep mud, but it's soupy. The problem is that there's these huge ruts. When you go into the water, it's all flat on top, and there's ruts going every direction underneath. That's what makes it extremely tricky. And you never know if you're going to drop into one of those deep ruts. So really this memory on that Chad Reed is remembering where the bad line's on the track. And you can see, he's re oh, you see, he just jumped over that. What he's trying to do is eliminate going in the puddles. Going in the puddles is very bad. You suck in water. Aaron, how are you doing down there? We are surviving, but speaking of surviving, normally you will see a mechanic pulled over the pit board saying breathe, how many seconds they are in front of somebody or behind somebody. But tonight the mechanics are standing back. They are just as dirty as these riders are out here. And the only thing that any of them seem to be writing on their pit boards is stay up and make sure to survive. There you see the mechanics area. I mean, those guys getting sloshed. Wow spray and down there you, you know the, these are the unsung heroes because they're gonna have to clean up this mess afterwards Ricky on a night like tonight how many out riding gear sets would you go through well you go through one set of gear each practice obviously they only practice once tonight you wear a new set in the heat race and a new set in the main event plus the sponsors like it you got to go out looking good you know what I mean they want to show off their their best gear and uh, but I, yeah but I tell you what you win the race tonight this is one of those jerseys that you don't give away. No. You no, let you, it no, dry you up. You don't wash it. You just let it dry oh, up. You Carpenter. frame it. Uh, Coleman. Carpenter. Oh. Coleman is uh, in the puddle. Look how deep it is, you guys. I mean, <laughs> that is crazy. There's not much to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was up to the front axle. Look at, look at this, you guys. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, you have to laugh. How about our speed camera crew down there wow. getting that shot for you, too? Nice job. Look at Reedy. Just coming through there and keeping his front end high. Don't want to dip it down in there, and he's just got it under control. Less than two laps to go. Chad Reed on his way to joining the ranks of the Daytona winners that have won three main events. Wow, he is really, he's earnest to win. You know, regardless of how he passed Kevin and this and that, and if somebody wants to play stuff, you know, you know, more than likely he, he would have been okay. You know, he's had a good chance of, of taking this. So going by the way he's riding right now, Reed. you know. Without question, he's turned the fastest lap here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> at, a, at a 151. Yeah, <laughs> that the last is amazing. Lap. The last lap was a 206. Just to give you an idea, and Trey Kennard and, uh, and Ryan Villapoto were in the 33s, 31s, something 32s, something like that. Look at how he's put Wyndham away here in the closing laps of this race. 13 second gap on lap six, 62 second gap on lap wow. 10. White flag first, is out. That was the first lap he did that, I think. Actually, I think the white flag is more beige by now. One to go for Chad Reed. He came to this race as a series points leader. Bootstrap coming on down there. One more lap. One, one, one more time by the mechanics area. His mechanic is probably so nervous right now, just sweating it, hoping please yeah, make it. It's made it this long. Please just make it one more lap. Chad Reed will grab another Daytona win. Here's that point where we were talking about where Reed got going again. Yeah. And he cut down the grass, okay? You have to enter the track in a safe place. It appeared that there was room in between the top blocks there. Chad chose to go down the inside. The AMA at this point is ruled on it. Yeah, or well, no if you're going to come in a, on, on a safe place, you cannot make a pass, gain a position. Now, he didn't gain a position when he was off the track. He got back on the track. He was side by side. If, if not behind, pass. yeah. So that's uh, yeah. It's not it's not our call. No, it's not Freeze. our call. Regardless, he's running a stellar race. I mean, this is. I mean, it's his. For Yamaha, it will be their eighth win here at Daytona. The last one 
coming in 2005 for Chad Reed, who is already third all time on the career wins list. It will be his 33rd Supercross victory. And look at the look at the tailpipe on Chad's bike. Uh -oh. oh, it's not over yet. No, the clutch uh -oh. is gone. No, is this? Oh no! no. Two turns to go. You Chad Reed's bike going up in smoke. No way. Where's Windham? Who is Who's over eight at Daytona? No, but he, he is. Kevin he, Windham was a minute six behind. Oh, oh look at the oh Reed's look at the frustration. Done. He's done. Look at the frustration. I cannot on Chad believe Reed. my eyes. He's trying to kick this spike started. His what, bike what, is not going to crank, you guys. What can he do, oh, Ricky? He anything. cannot do anything. I don't. Doesn't look like it has much compression. You see how easy he's kicking that bike. That's Wyndham coming here up comes over the Wyndham right here. Here's Wyndham oh right my here. Gosh, talk about this! I cannot he, he, believe this. He's is not going to believe no. what he sees. No, I don't. He probably don't even. Oh, he's looking. He's looking. I, Chad, I cannot believe my, my eyes. Chad Reed was just two corners away. Oh look at yeah, he's he's mad at us. Mechanic his, can't believe it. Oh, and there's man. nothing he can do. No. I mean, I that and is, Reed just I sits feel. there. I feel so, so bad for him. Here's Kevin Windham right here. Here comes Kevin Windham. Does he even know? Does he even know? There he goes. There Kevin he goes. Windham even just he's passed winning. him. Does he know he's winning? He's on his way wow. to his first Daytona Supercross by Honda win. He was 0 for 8, and now he's about to win Daytona. Kevin has to know something is going on because the crowd is going absolutely ballistic. He can see Reed wow. right there in the corner. But will his bike make it? Yeah. He's got to get to the Man. checkered flag. I would find a way to push it from here. Is he going to do it? Kevin Windham's going to win. Wow. He he the <laughs> The battle of attrition. One of the most incredible finishes in the history of Supercross as Kevin Windham sloshes his way to victory. And at oh. the same time, the agony of the defeat for Chad Reed, who put on such a gritty performance here, and instead, the smile through all the mud is going to be electric for Kevin Windham. That's Daytona. Wednesday prime time. Chad Reed. Ooh. That is oh. the longest walk you will ever see. Man. So disappointing with three Work. turns to go. The bite gives out on me after that epic battle that he put on. Look at the Words face. You can see it in the that. eyes, can't you? Disappointment. Words cannot. Ugh. That is so devastating, man. His bike still Gosh. sits out there in the middle of the racetrack and Reed making Not even a long his walk. There, there's Preston's bike getting pulled out. And let's go down to Aaron Bates, who's with a winner we just, Aaron, three corners away from the finish, did not expect to see. Well, guys, Kevin Windham, he's never won here in Daytona, but at 30 years old, he pulls it around, and you do the, just that. Kevin, when you came around the corner and you saw Chad down, were you completely surprised? I tell you what, I saw the 22 st stalled out in a, in a puddle of water, man, and I, I'd never been so happy. This Daytona dirt's never tasted so good in my mouth. It was a, it was a brutal race. I got stuck once, stalled it once, and... Uh, Man, just so wet and so nasty, and uh, man, just kept kept my head down, kept plugging away, and I was glad to make it. It was a it was a truly tr uh, treacherous course tonight. Two wins for Kevin Windham already this season. We'll see what's in store coming up. And if you're into numbers, Kevin Windham's 14th career win comes at Daytona, matching his number plate. Here's the points now, guys. 24 separating Windham and Chad Reed. Anything Chad Reed sixth, yeah, that uh, Wyndham picked up some good points. He's been feathering it right around that one race of 25 points, but now he just dips under it. As a racer, I mean, the, 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 you get under that 25, that is a good, that's nice. Aaron. Well, guys, Davey Millsaps, he's wiping all the sand out of his eyes, and obviously it's a little bit painful. You're squinting out there, Davey. After you have to throw away your goggles at that point, what is it that's going through your mind? Well, I don't know. You know, I threw them out halfway, and I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I had to turn my head every corner, and, and uh, you know, it was a good race, though. It was fun, and, you know, it was one to definitely get on the podium for. Hey, all of the bad conditions that are taking place out here, what was the key to tonight to make it all a sweet success for you? Just uh, stay consistent and just survive. You know, everyone, I was probably way back and everyone went down and then I just went into third. And uh, unfortunately, Chad, uh, something happened to his bike, but you know, everyone else uh, capitalized on that. You know, it's a bummer, but uh, it's part of racing. Congratulations on the podium once again.
Well, now you can get the latest race results and news right on your phone with weekly green alerts for speed. Text KX to 773333 on your mobile phone to receive free motorcycle racing text alerts, speed green alerts presented by Kawasaki. Let's go back to Aaron. Jacob Marsak, the man, the privateer. We've seen him take a fourth already this season, but making it onto the podium, what does this mean to you? Um, man, it's just amazing. I didn't know what place I was in, and uh, I just went out there and gave it 110%, just going through. I went through like two pairs of goggles from Scott, and I just kept pulling in for goggles, and, and it just turned out right. Great to see the underdog pull through. Yeah. Well, for the third time, Honda sweeps Daytona. They did it 86, 91, and 08, gentlemen. Wow. What'd you think, Ricky, the track you designed, I, the race you produced? <laughs> it, it definitely was, uh, it, it was a, a man's track. That's the craziest, it's, it. it's the craziest race that I've ever seen. Never seen a situation this way. Great job, Kevin Winner. Well, it started raining about 3.45 this afternoon. It's still raining, and it provided one of the most unbelievable races we've ever seen. And of course, it happened here at Daytona. That's why this Supercross is such a legend. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emick and our pal Ricky Carmichael, go, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from the Daytona Supercross by Honda. And congratulations to first time Daytona winner, Kevin Windham. <laughs>